installation on machine. This is the control valve of PC200-7. This cutaway model is positioned sideways, but in actual machine, this side is the top side, and the other is the bottom side. PC200-8 control valve is positioned same as the PC200-7. Let us see the details of this control valve. There is no big difference between dash 7 and dash 8 control valves. If you understand the control valve of the dash 7, you can easily understand the dash 8 control valves. The main oil flow. Two hydraulic hoses from front pump and rear pump are connected here. And this side is the rear side of the machine. Inside the control valve, there are six control spools for arm, right hand travel, swing, boom, left hand travel, bucket, and attachment. On the other side of the control valve, there are two outlet ports designated for each control spools. One port is for the oil going to the actuator, hydraulic cylinder or hydraulic motor and the other for the return from the actuators. The oil going back to the hydraulic tank flows through this port at the bottom side of the control valve. Color rule. Before we see the detail of the oil flow, let us confirm the meaning of the colored wires. In this control valve, there are some colored wires passing through the ports. The color of each wire is based on the color rule of the paper materials. For example, red for front pump pressure, pink for rear pump pressure, green for Ellis pressure, and blue for return line pressure. It helps you to understand which ports are connected. Merge divider valve. Two oil lines from the front pump and rear pump enter the control valve through this block. Inside of the block, there is a merge divider valve to control the front and rear pump lines from merging or dividing based on the program of the pump controller. If there is control pressure here, the spool is pushed and makes two source lines divided.
When the two source lines are divided, the front pump provides a source pressure for the three bottom side control spools, arm, right hand travel, and swing. The rear pump provides a source pressure for the four upper control spools, boom, left hand travel, bucket, and attachment. But most of the operation, except when traveling, the two source lines are merged. Sequence valve. From the front pump, oil goes to the control valve passing through this sequence valve. There is a self-pressure reducing valve installed, which creates the control pressure from the front pump pressure. The source pressure from the front pump enters the self-pressure reducing valve before the sequence valve. The function of the sequence valve is to maintain the source pressure for the self-pressure reducing valve even if the source pressure after the sequence valve becomes negative. For example, when boom lowering is operated quickly, pump line pressure lowers, then the sequence valve closes to maintain the source pressure for the self-pressure reducing valve. Self-pressure reducing valve. This is a cutaway model of self-pressure reducing valve. This valve is widely employed not only on excavators but also on bulldozers and wheel loaders. Source pressure from the front pump enters here. This is the output line of the control pressure. This is the drain line. This port is connected to the drain line. The source pressure from the front pump enters this valve and flows inside this chamber. Oil then flows through the orifice to the other side of the chamber. When the pressure exceeds 3.3 megapascal rated pressure, this puppet is pushed open and small amount of oil starts to drain and on the same time there is a differential pressure developed before and after the orifice and it pushes this valve. This is the balanced position. Small amount of oil passes through the orifice and drains from the puppet. There is a safety valve to protect the system from abnormal surge pressure. Pump pressure line. This is the cutaway of the control spool for swing. Oil from the front pump flows through here and is divided into two.
These two ports are connected to the bottom side control spools for right hand travel and arm. and reach the bottom of the control valve. At the bottom of the control valve, an unload valve and a main relief valve are installed. The same goes with the oil from the rear pump that is divided into two and flows to the upper control spools for boom, left hand travel, bucket and attachment and reach the top side of the control valve. At the top side of the control valve, an unload valve and a main relief valve are also installed. When all control levers are in neutral position, all spools are blocking the oil from the pump. Then the unload valve opens and drains the oil to tank. The main relief valve sets the maximum circuit pressure and has two-stage function. When pressure from the solenoid valve is applied to this port, relief pressure is increased from 34.8 MPa to 37.2 MPa. Drain line. Here is the top side of the control valve. When unload valve or main relief valves are opened, oil goes to this line called drain lines. Both ends of the drain lines are connected vertically through all the drain lines of the control spools to the bottom of the control valve. Please follow the two blue wires. These are the drain lines of each control spools. At the bottom of the control valve is the drain line of the oil going back to tank through this valve. This is the back pressure valve also known as the lift check valve in the shop manual. When the engine is running, the control pressure comes here and pushes this piston to maintain the drain line at a certain amount of pressure of 0.25 MPa. The reason to maintain the drain line with small pressure is to make smooth flow of the oil in the boom and arm regeneration circuit and prevent cavitation of hydraulic motor for example, when swing is braking. Control spool.